What's up, everyone? I got John on the podcast, and today we're talking through Amazon Japan. This really isn't a topic that I have seen many sellers talk through, so I'm interested to hear your story, John. I'm interested to hear how you even got into this because I, I feel like,、uh, yeah, this just isn't really a, a topic that too many people consider. And so I think that we're going to have a good time breaking down all the considerations of why you should consider getting into Amazon Japan. So, John, to, to kick us off, could you just talk about yourself a little bit? Maybe talk about how, how you got into Amazon and how you got to Amazon Japan. Sure.、Um, so, the backstory is part of my story. I lived in Japan for five years. So, that was sort of part of the story. And then、uh, we moved back. Um, from the UK, as you can probably tell by my accent.、I、moved back here in 2010.、Um, I've been working in e commerce in different, different ways. Ended up making a connection with、uh, Neil, who's my business partner. He's been selling、uh, a private label product. He develops his own private label brand on Amazon in Europe. And、uh, Japan was on his radar. He'd、mm-hmm. been seeing、um, adverts within Seller Central, kind of saying, why not sell in Japan? And we got talking one day and、uh, Somebody nudged us together, I think, and he knew that I lived in Japan. So, next step was we started selling his products、uh, on Amazon Japan.、Uh, did that for a, a year or so, and then kind of developed the agency work off, off the back of that. And then the agency's going for about, been going for about three years now. So,、mm, nice. Yeah, there we go. That's fantastic. <laughs> Crazy ride. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious.、Uh, usually, From, it's typical for sellers to consider marketplace wise, to consider the US first, of course, usually, UK, usually second, maybe Canada tossed、mm-hmm. in there, maybe Australia even with a couple others. But why, why Amazon Japan? Was it, again, like you said, it was just one of those things, one of those adverts that popped up and you lived there, which I'm assuming gives you a, a decent understanding and advantage to understanding how to do it. But Why, what, what made you go for Amazon Japan in the first place? Well, it's a bigger market than people think, for, for one. And I think it's, it's not as competitive as well in, in, in some regards. So, you know, there's, there's le- especially in the US, there's loads of people that know and understand Amazon completely. And, you know, the, the, there's a, quite a lot of broad knowledge about Amazon and the opportunity it presents, whereas th- there's not that sort of culture in Japan, really. So I think there's, there's less competition on the platform from sellers.、Um, and yeah, in terms of market size, you know, it's the, the third or fourth largest、um, Amazon marketplace. It's been、right. going since 99, so it's very well established kind of things, which, you know, often surprises people. They, 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 you know, they think it's a new market, but, it, but it's not. It's, it's very well established. I'm sure you,、uh, you spend time correcting people often. Like, no, it's,、uh, it's, it's, been, it's been up for a long time. I, I want to touch on the, the purchase behavior a bit, which you, you mentioned briefly, but similar to,、uh, I, I have friends who sell in, in Germany. And similar to there, they, they, when they first started selling, they encountered a, a pretty apparent difference in buyer behavior, where in,、um, their experience was that the, the Germans are a bit more skeptical. When it comes to product buying. And that's, of course, just the case with, from their, their anecdotal experience, but that's an example, I would say, of different buyer behavior. Is, is,、uh, how is Japan's buyer behavior different from something like the United States? Like, wh- what does that difference look like when it comes to selling on Amazon? Yeah, I think there's probably two particular things. One is Japanese people tend to be quite detail orientated. So, you know, if you've not listed every particular specification of your product, then they'll have a question in the head and you'll get a very detailed question potentially about it. You know, will it do this at this time of day? Or I don't you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like random questions that you would never sort of think of.、Sure. So, It's good, it's good to go deep on your product listings and explain it, you know, to, to kind of stop these questions. Or if you do get questions, then, you know, make sure you answer them in the listing. And secondly, from a sort of review and point of view, that they're, they're, they're quite good at leaving reviews in Japan. And we see return rates、uh, lower in, in Japan than compared to, to what we see in the UK and Europe. So,、um, whilst the detail orientated, they're 
they're kind of easy going once they've got the products providing you know you can answer all their points and it, and it does what it does it, they're, they're happy with the products you know it does does its function yeah uh, that's good i i think uh, i want to zoom out a little bit um just even broad focus because uh at, at a high level I, i'm guessing a lot of sellers listening to this might might be in their minds putting trying to put japan on a list of sorts in a ranking for mm -hmm. where if they are considering expanding into foreign marketplaces where maybe they should put japan how how does japan rank on on the list of of marketplaces in your mind in your experience where would you put japan in terms of priority you think that sellers should consider um I mean, for me, it goes to market size. I mean, if you're an English speaker, then yeah, definitely do, you know, US, UK first and second. Germany, you know, market size is bigger than the UK, so you'd probably do that next. And then then Japan after that, really, I think. You know, people, people often kind of clump the EU together and, you know, they'll go after Italy, Spain, France kind of thing. But, you know, Japan's bigger than all of those. Uh, I don't really understand why you wouldn't go there next. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think and, and it that's, and that's quite... a difficult question, right? Because everyone has different, everyone's going to be different in terms of the products they offer and where they're at in their Amazon journey, which which will create differences in, in where they're looking to expand to. But you'd put it pretty high up. I mean, I would. Opinion. I mean, it, it depends on your business as well. So, you know, a lot of, um, you know, there's Amazon agencies that kind of help with all of the European operations, right? So if you're working with one agency and they can put you on all five market european marketplaces then you know it kind of makes sense from a you know logistics sort of point of view sure. you know to, to 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 do the eu one so i do get it but yeah yeah but what what would you say i'm guessing and this is maybe a difficult question to answer as well we're going to be generalizing a bit but what yeah. would you say are, are some of the better markets that that japanese people tend to respond to so what, what do they what do customers respond to the best and what are maybe some markets that don't typically respond as well in japan by markets you mean like categories dear or? sorry yeah i mean categories like types of products yeah okay so um health and beauty is a, a very strong one on amazon you know the typical electronics products is is strong sports and outdoors homeware that type of thing are the bigger ones yep. where it's further behind grocery um and kind of clothing apparel mm -hmm. is 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 further down, I'd say. And part of the reason for that is um, in Japan, the, the other big e-commerce platform is Rakuten. And that, right. that started before Amazon. And that was the kind of, that was the dominant player historically. And that was very strong in those categories. So like clothing and food, you know, that, that historically has done better, whereas Amazon's mm. been more about electronics and stuff. Yeah. Um, books, obviously, at the start. So, yeah, that's kind of the reason now amazon is is you know about the same size as rakuten it's sort of catching up fast so it's interesting yeah. that's interesting that, that leaves a lot of room for for promise i think and of course amazon i'm guessing amazon's goal is to expand as much as possible in in each of these countries i was just reading up on south korea specifically and um competition there in terms of platform it's just interesting to see how uh in Asia specifically, in, in in that direction of the world, there are a number of different companies that are competing for that type of, of share in yeah. in each of these countries. Um, let's maybe switch gears a little bit to to optimization for listings specifically. So uh -huh. you touched you touched on um, in Japan needing to be a little more detail oriented in your listing, and I want to talk about really like nitty gritty specifics here. So in in what very specific ways would you recommend that let's say sellers do jump into Japan, what do they need to really consider rebuilding in their listing and focusing on if they're going to jump into everything? Yeah. So, I mean, there's sort of three levels that you could go in. One is you just directly translate your product listing kind of thing, which, you know, if you just starting off maybe, but we, we, we don't really recommend that. So Japan has three different alphabets. Uh, it's got kind of, um, it's got hiragana, katakana, kanji. So there's potentially three different ways of writing the that particular keyword or key phrase or whatever, um, depending on how people are typing. So it pays to do 
keyword research when before you write your product listings and make sure that you've got your you know these these key phrases in in there in sure. three different formats or two different formats depending you know on the particular words kind of thing so that's kind of one thing that you know we we think is very important mm. because you know if the you could be missing out on 50 percent of the sales for example oh, if, right. you don't, if you've only got it in one alphabet and people rate it both both ways kind of thing so so you, you know, shouldn't just like not, plug it into google translate is that absolutely not no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the yeah, wrong yeah, thing to do okay got it yeah yeah, yeah don't do that because again we you know we've had people come to us that oh, my product's not selling you know okay and then we look over the listings and you know kayo our our main editor she'd be like well it doesn't make any sense you know no, nobody would buy that it's like so it I, i'm sure i'm sure customers can tell i'm sure they can tell if something yeah yeah has absolutely been put the process and, you know you, you, you talk about trust kind of thing right you need to build mm -hmm. trust and if if you've got a a load of copy that doesn't make any sense and is just gobbledygook then you're not going to trust that product to, right. <laughs> to do what it says it does well it, you don't even understand what it says it does but even looking at the pictures right you wouldn't <laughs> um so yeah no it's important to get your listings set up you know well i'm not i'm not saying you have to go 10 layers deep kind of thing from the off you know if you're just in the market but you know make sure they're they're good enough and uh mm -hmm. you know do do a bit of research Yep. Beyond, um, beyond a, a, plus, a plus content oh, has ahead. been um, a plus content. You don't need to be brand registered to get that in Japan. You never have done. So, you know, definitely you can add lots of images and stuff below your, your main product details. So, you know, again, that's something that you should do. Um, Cause yeah, it, it, you need, you know, nobody knows your product. Nobody knows your brand in Japan when you're just launching the only area you've got, is your product details page. So you need to kind of right. make maximum use of that space to kind of build that trust really. Have you found, have you found success? Like do you, do you run ads off of Amazon? Do you, do you run any sort of advertising? Like I, I'm not sure what social medias are, are present there are relevant, like the Facebook equivalent in the U S do you, do you, have you found success with different platform, multi-platforms like that? Uh, we don't, we don't run ads ourselves off Amazon ads, yeah, no, we just do on Amazon stuff. We've, we've had a couple of clients that have got, you know, brand awareness and have been doing ads and, you know, they, they, they've had mixed success, I'd say, you know, mm. some of them have struggled, some of them have done okay. So yeah, it's, it's an area for improvement, but it's, it's, it's fundamentally a good thing to do. Yeah. And we're, we're looking to sort of partner with, um, other marketing agencies in Japan to try and build sure. that into, into the process of launching brands. What do you think, um, and this could involve listing optimization as well, but what, what, what are the biggest areas you, you mentioned getting a hold of some, some people's listings and taking a look at their translations and just smacking yourself on the head? Uh, what, what are some of the other biggest areas you, you see sellers failing in when it comes to the Japanese marketplace? Um, so that's another another area is not not doing your homework on sending in your products. <laughs> so we've mm -hmm. had you need an importer of record, which is somebody who's responsible for accepting the goods um, when they're imported into Japan. So you know if you're sending a thousand units of your product in, somebody in Japan needs to represent you to accept those. Oh. Now, again, we've we've had people contact us. Their products have been stuck at customs you know can you help us it's like did you have an importer of record no <laughs> okay <laughs> you didn't think well to that's essential that. That, <laughs> yeah yeah so you know again don't do that <laughs> right <laughs> um, yeah and I, then, i'm hearing the, the, the theme i'm hearing here is is do your homework I, a I, little like, yeah I, yeah because yeah. i'm assuming i'm assuming people maybe think it's the same as the united states and I'm I'm just hearing some some not major super major things but small intricacies that are a bit different where you you just need to do a bit of your homework before you just send your products into Amazon Japan. Yeah, yeah. No, the and the I guess the third one is sort of compliance stuff as well. So you know, food products, electronics products, um, anything that touches your body, kind of thing, cosmetics. You know that that all needs kind of rigorous compliance testing under the 
whilst the, the parameters are fundamentally the same as Europe or the US, generally speaking, you know, as long as nothing's too crazy in the product, you know, it's a slightly different system. So, you know, it needs the Japan stamp of approval rather than the sure. FDA stamp of approval kind of thing. So it's it all needs to properly uh, from the Japanese point of view. Mm. From from the uh, let's say we have a seller who is maybe has like five to ten products and he's considering really going into Japan. Like his products, uh, he's done his research and his products do really well, but he's maybe wondering what his first step should be. What what would your recommendations be as kind of the first couple steps to start the process of getting your th goods into Amazon Japan? Yeah. So um, well, we we came up we, we do a product opportunity report to kind of answer this question to some degree so it's like will my product sell on amazon japan mm -hmm. and we kind of do a bit of market research to see what other similar products are selling on amazon japan how the competition stacks up you know go off their best seller rank to see what sort of sales volumes they're doing um, and then that gives you an indication of whether you know your product is is viable to sell in japan or not really um yeah, I don't know. Does that answer it? So, I think your no, question no, yeah, was slightly yeah. so, different. So you're, but... No, 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 that's good. So your, your, of course, first recommendation before you send anything into Amazon is to really check and see whether it, it has potential, right? Like yeah. in terms of the this this person's thought process, the step-by-step -step would be, okay, first check and see, is there potential? Step yeah. two would then um, be past that point, what would you say? Yeah, so step two is, is so the, Basically, the step one is like, as long as that doesn't reveal it's a no. So if that right. comes back as negative, right. that no, don't launch this product, you know, nobody else is selling it or there's no category for that or whatever, then, you know, stop there. If it comes back as being, you know, okay, the, it looks like there's some similar products doing reasonably well, yeah, let's give it a go kind of thing. Then the next step is basically to get your listing set up right and to check out the compliance side really they're the, the two next hurdles so and then once you've sent the product in it's about getting eyeballs on your listing which you know obviously ppc plays into that right um and i'm guessing the localized localization of advertising is really important like the the words that you use the keywords you're using i'm guessing again not a uh, google translate situation Yes, I mean, probably less so than you imagine. So provided we've mm. done the keyword research and the product details page, you know, that we've, we're in the right category. So the product is relevant for, you know, whatever, whatever it is, then we do start off with auto campaigns to, to begin with in many cases, because um, we want to find out what customers are actually searching for, you know, we don't want to second guess. So yeah, we could put a list of keywords that we think are right. But, you know, the, we find the auto campaign algorithm is actually quite good when you're starting off and stuff. And then as we see the data come in, then we move them across to sort of broad match and exact match campaigns so that we can have more control over it. Um, sure. But yeah, the, the, the advertising, you know, that is one area that's not that complex really, you know, especially if you're just going off the data and they're often very short key phrases and Google Translate does work in those situations mm -hmm. because you know it's just one or two words maybe three sure. at a max kind of thing and and uh, yeah you can you can get an understanding of what's going on as an english speaker in that situation that's good to know so google translate does have us maybe perhaps a small place <laughs> in yeah Japan. yeah uh, i mean it, <laughs> it's it's good for understanding what's going on so again of customer course. messages is another way another place where it works quite well so if a customer sends you a message question about your products if you Google Translate that, you can probably work out the gist of what they're saying, mm -hmm. um, but don't use it to reply to them because <laughs> right, right. Uh, there's certain levels of politeness when it comes to customer service, and you know Japan has uh -huh. different hierarchies of kind of language it uses. Uh, again, if you if you just do a Google Translate reply, then you know you're quite likely to upset your customer. <laughs> I, and then they'll get, they'll probably go and have a oh, rant and leave you a negative review or something like exa that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's another that's another big consideration for any for any if you're going from the U.S. to any foreign marketplace is the back end is the the customer support side of things where if you're not set up to take in and respond to those people in in a good way or in a way knowledgeable enough to know how to respond to them, 
that is a setup for failure in the long run. I mean, that's any any post-purchase customer interaction is just as important as the pre-purchase, right? So that that is a huge piece and a huge consideration for considering considering Japan. Exactly. I mean, you need to be polite and thoughtful, I guess, when you're communicating yeah. with the customers. If nothing else, if you don't know the answer, at least be polite and nice. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I'm curious. I've, I've been asking sellers this in, in each of these interviews. 2020 or 2020 has been such a crazy time and such a, a change for e-commerce and for Amazon. And I'm curious, what? how do you think Amazon Japan or just Amazon in general even, is going to change in 2021. COVID, of course, has created an influence that a lot of this change, and you, you've been plugged into Japan more than anyone I know. So how do you think, how, how do you see Amazon Japan changing in 2021? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's just accelerated the whole e-commerce situation, hasn't it, really? And that's the, exactly the same in Japan as it has as it has been the rest of the world i think you know um yeah yeah it's no yeah the same i think looking ahead to next year i think that that acceleration that or that yeah it's only gonna it's only gonna go one way it's only gonna get bigger and bigger i think you know habits are an interesting thing so mm -hmm. my my first foray was in into into in e-commerce was grocery delivery kind of thing and changing people's habits and getting them to stop shopping at supermarkets is just, uh, yeah. I found to be really, really, well, impossible kind of thing. But sure. when people start to use a, a different platform, when they when they go away from physically shopping and, and more and more people are shopping online, I think because it's such, every, you know, Amazon is just so smooth and it just works and everything comes so quick, you know, oh, once yeah. you've experienced it, it as a as a new or a, you know new person to e-commerce as from a cons as a customer you why would you kind of go back really <laughs> yeah yeah so. no that, you bring up a really good point i think that that disruption is a fantastic example of why why COVID is changing so much right i, I mean it's easy to to point to buyer behavior changing of course people are going to buy christmas presents and christmas gifts like online this year more than ever before right but that that example of habits is one that is more it's more broad reaching groceries great example people there are probably so many my parents never bought groceries online mm -hmm. literally never bought groceries online before and because of covid now are and i see that sticking maybe not as full of capacity as it is now but i see that habit it, this, this the disruption has already happened and i see yeah. that habit sticking in not just groceries but in so many other ways in e-commerce no, ex exactly yeah yeah it's not it's not going to go back is it the no <laughs> no the old habits old habits die hard unless there's a, a pandemic influencing those habits <laughs> um yeah. well john thank you so much for talking about japan i i guess i want to leave the door open for one last word of encouragement that you have for our amazon audience um yeah i mean if you I think another another point about Amazon is, or Japan is it's a whole pot of brand new customers to your product, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like you're launching a new product in a, in your own marketplace that's going to cannibalize to some extent, or it's you know these are entirely new people that are uh, yeah that are there and probably willing to 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 buy your products. Um, so yeah, it's it's a good consideration and it's a good alternative to to consider in the grand scheme of launching, either launching more products, right? Expanding your product line in your current marketplace or considering another marketplace to grow your business. And I think more people tend to lean towards growing your product line, which isn't a bad thing, of course. Mm -hmm. But I think the the thought of global expansion tends, that conversation tends to get left behind. And I think it's worth whoever's listening to at least consider. Um, well, John, thank you so much for sharing your, your wisdom of Japan with Absolute us. Absolute pleasure. Uh, Thanks for having uh, me. <laughs> of course. I'm curious, how can, if our sellers are interested in, in getting into Japan, how can they get in touch with you specifically? Sure. So we've got the website, risingsuncommerce.com. Um, if, so if you just head on to that, then uh, yeah, you can contact us through that. Perfect. And that's for 
many things in getting your products into Amazon? Is it uh, kind of a full all-in-one solution or is it more like listing optimization or anything, everything? Uh, so there's sort of four main areas we do. One is the market research reports. Two, setting your products up well. Three, advertising support. And fourth, customer and uh, customer support and um, Amazon okay. support cases. So, yeah. Got it. I'll put all your info Amazon in. All things Amazon Japan. <laughs> all, thi all things Amazon Japan. I love it. Well, I'll put your info in the show notes. And, John, thank you so much again for taking time to be on the show. I appreciate it. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Good stuff. Hey, thanks. Thank you again, John. Really great no stuff. I, I, I'm interested in, I'm very interested in um, the global expansion aspect of Amazon. And like I said, I, I think it's one that not a lot of sellers really consider when it comes to growing their business. So hopefully we can drive some people your way and into Amazon Japan. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's much appreciated, but uh, always happy to, to talk and be on and stuff. So yeah, thanks for having Fantastic. me. Good to connect. Of course, of course. I'll, uh, I'll let you know when when this goes live. It might be towards the end, middle or end of December and or also into the new year. Um, but I'll keep you updated. I'll let you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, the new year might be better for something like this because yep. Japan doesn't really have the queue for like... Uh, right, like, right. You know, Christmas is not such a big thing over there that like it is in Europe and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've, been, I've been considering doing a, a multi... Um, like a multi-country series, just talking through different countries and Amazon, getting into Amazon in, in the UK specifically, in Japan, in Germany. So I, I might put together a, a series of, of a couple different countries and have this as one of the first. Um, we'll see. I think, that, I think you're right. I think it would be a good thing leading into the new year, considering expansion. Um, so I'll let you know. Looking yeah, yeah, it. cool. Yeah, do, and then I can share it with LinkedIn and stuff. So yeah, awesome. Be good too. Awesome. Nice one. All right, thanks very much, Cameron. Good to chat. For sure. Thank you, John. You yes. as well. We'll talk soon. Bye for now. Bye bye. See ya. Bye.